Hey, this is John Weiss. Happy New Year. We're prepping a Wednesday night class, and this class is about the ultimate kingdom. And what we're looking at this, this time in chapter 4 is, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that when you speak to us, it changes our life. Open our ears, open our hearts that we can hear your word. Lord, let my word speak according to your will in Jesus' name. And we thank you for all those listening. May their lives be blessed and filled with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. There's going to be three or four segments uh, each week, and we're going to split this chapter into half. But you can take it in small doses, and so uh, there'll be eight, six, eight, ten-minute classes. All right, here we go. The holy God we worship personifies love and mercy, but we must also recognize justice, another attribute of his personality. For justice to be administered, there must be consequences for improper lives and actions, as well as rewards for proper and right behavior. Human nature has a tendency to wish to take upon itself the responsibility of meting out vengeance to those who behave improperly. But in reality, whose responsibility is this? The Apostle Paul wrote, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap, heap, heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 19 through 21. Vengeance properly belongs to God, and that is... I guess I'll just hold this. Vengeance properly belongs to God, and the vengeance is another theme which is revealed to John in his revelation of Jesus Christ. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? on them that dwell on the earth. We have come now to the seventh seal, Revelation 8, which is the answer to the cry of the saints. How long, O Lord, how long? By the way, my friend over here is driving. That's my buddy Will. We're heading out. For me, I'm looking for a piece of equipment that I need to use for work, so we're going to go see if this one's going to work for us or not. Let's go to the next page here. And when he, or when Christ, has opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven. Angels, uh, about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. Revelation 8, 1 through 2. And you know, this is just a side note. Whenever uh, God uses trumpets in the Bible to make a statement, and Revelation is a prime example of that, what he's doing is he's saying something very important is about to be said. So that's the way it's, that's how we use the, when we see the term trumpets. What was about to happen, question mark? Why the silence, question mark. When I was a little boy, I remember going to church with my two sisters, who were closest in age to me. Invariably, when we got into the car after the service, we knew my dad's mood, which, whether or not we had met the standards he demanded of us for our conduct in the house of God. When we knew we had been attentive and had behaved properly, we were three boisterous children, counting cars, talking loudly, singing songs, and having a great time in general. Finally, Daddy or Mama would say, not so loud, children. If we had misbehaved, we knew that we were about to be judged. <laughs> All the way home, there would, was not one word from us, from any of us, because we knew what was going to happen when we got home. There was silence. 
lift those memories of childhood discipline to a heavenly degree, and that is what this passage of Scripture is describing. Heaven comes to a standstill because God is going to judge the world, but the Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Habakkuk 2.20 In my opinion, the seven angels represent the perfection of God, God's patience, which has now been accomplished. God has been long-suffering, but the seven trumpets announces that His patience is about to demand righteousness. All heaven stands in all, awed silence, as it understands that the cry of the saints is about to be answered. How long, O Lord, will you allow evil men to prosper? Question mark. How long will you permit governments to persecute innocent people? Question mark. How much longer will people in ungodly families and businesses, business relationships be allowed to continue? The opening of the seventh seal is about to bring the woes that must accompany the judgment of God, and heaven is stilled. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the, the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake, Revelation 8, verses 3 through 5. This is the beginning of the answers to the cries of the saints. I doubt that many of us know the true value of the prayers of the saints before God. They are constant incense in the nostrils of God. When Moses encountered God in the burning bush, God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Exodus 3, verse 7. This cry has now been lifted to an even higher dimension. The prayers of the saints have ascended to the ears of God. And God has said, Now it is time to avenge the cause of the righteous upon the earth. Picture the mighty angels standing before the throne of God, holding the censer from which arises the, the incense of every prayer ever prayed by a saint of God! Exclamation mark prayer we must see can never be an option for the child of God or for the church of Jesus Christ. In verse 5, John describes another angel in addition to the seven who herald the judgment of God. This angel filled the censer with fire, prayers, from the altar and cast it to the earth, signifying that the saints' prayers have now become judgment against the earth. This angel, I believe, represents the intercession of Jesus Christ himself, in addition to the intercessory prayers of the saints. As the Holy Spirit reveals the purpose of John's revelation, I began to understand that judgment, like prophecy, is timeless. Many people who receive prophecy believe that it refers only to future events, but this is not so. Prophecy can be past present or future. Prophecy can even be God's way of bearing witness to something that has already taken place in someone's life. Since judgment like prophecy is timeless, when God speaks judgment, it can also be past, present, or future. Some judgments are yet to come, but many trumpets of judgment are sounding even today if we would hear them. These are not the trumpets which will proclaim God's judgment upon the world, but they are trumpets saying, I am God, and I will not allow you to get by with the wrong choices and actions you are taking. The way of a transgressor is hard. The trumpets are saying, beware, judgment is inevitable.